Hi everybody, welcome to Let's Make Art. I'm Sarah Cray and we are going to paint a little postcard for our Let's Make Art Matter for May. This is what we're doing. Ah. So if you are a subscriber, um, every single month we include a pre-stamped, pre-addressed postcard and we all paint something that we send to a family or an individual who just needs a little bit of extra love that month. Um, but for this month, for May, I thought it'd be fun if we stamped the cards for you but didn't address them and you can send it to somebody that you want to send it to. So it was, it was kind of in honors of Mother's Day. However, we understand that maybe not everybody has a mother to send this to. So maybe a grandma or a friend or a sister or just somebody that you love. So we are going to use the paints from our May subscription box. Now, if you are not a subscriber, you can still absolutely participate in this. You can get water postcards from, or watercolor postcards from letsmakeart.com. If you, uh, well, this one, you send it to whoever you want. But for other ones, you just message us and we'll share the address with you so you can participate. It's a lot of fun. It's so nice, too. It's great to do something for somebody else. So we're going to paint this floral basket. I thought that'd be a fun little project to paint. It kind of calls back to our floral truck project a little bit. So, you know, fun. Fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. What I'm trying to say is you're going to have fun. <laughs> so... Uh, we are going to start off with doing our basket, and then we will do our flowers, and then we will do our shadows. One, two, three. That's it. So, I'm going to grab my sepia from my box, and there's not an outline for this. I'm just going to show you how to do a little basket. So, I'm going to do one that's kind of, can you picture those baskets where they're kind of wavy, like there's like a bend in the rim? Are they woven? Yeah. Yes. Okay, that's kind of what we're doing. Oh, perfect. So for the basket, I'm going to start on the middle of my paper and I'm going to do kind of a soft curved line like that. And this is going to be um, the top of my basket. And then I'm going to kind of like angle in the edges like so. And of course you can readjust. If I have to readjust the line to smooth it out, nothing wrong with that. I kind of put them in. I didn't put them straight down. I kind of curved them in. And then you kind of curve the bottom. So here is our basket shape. And then I'm going to do another line right on top of it to mimic this one. And that will be the like rim. You know how baskets usually have like a little rim on them. So I'm going to go a little bit longer. Just do a rim. Just like that. Okay? That looks so cool. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> so now what we're going to do is we are going to do some hash marks to make it look like it's woven because they kind of go in and out. So I'm going to pick up a little bit more of my brown and I'm just going to do some horizontal lines this way. Fun fact about Keenan. Yeah. I uh, am an Eagle Scout mm -hmm. and I did the basket weaving merit badge. You did? Back in the day. Good times. So you should be up here teaching I, us how to do this. You know the ins I, and outs of, and we, of weaving. Ins and outs of weaving. <laughs> I see what you did there. You like that? <laughs> Okay, so if you don't know what hash marks are, they're essentially when you do marks that are one angle and then go across and do the opposite angle. And that's how you can kind of create layers. And it's really helpful because when you look at baskets that are woven, it's that same idea, crisscrossing angles. And that's how it makes it look like they're woven. So now I'm gonna go across and do the opposite side. And it's okay if they're not evenly spaced. I actually kind of like it when they run into each other a little bit more. Like that. And then I did a, a little on the rim. But I didn't do the rim while I was doing the basket because they're, they're woven at different times so the weaving pattern would be different on the rim as it would on the body of the basket. That's why they're not totally matching up. Or I'm trying to get them so they're not matching up because they would be different. So whereas the basket is woven, the the rim is twisted oh okay so on all sense. baskets not all baskets so you don't really know but i'm just saying <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> seems like it would help to picture it that way <laughs> that is helpful Keenan. thank you <laughs> sorry sorry i got a little feisty about my basket <laughs> the tears are real but the feelings are not <laughs> okay so and as you, I don't know if you guys can see that close up, but I, my line went a little bit across the rim. Don't worry about that. It's not a big deal. 
I'm actually going to do another layer right underneath the rim just to darken it because the, the rim would kind of give it a little bit of a shadow. And you can do one side a little bit more darker than the other because usually it would be depending on where your light source is. Okay. So there's my basket. I'm going to put in my handle. It's just going to be a curved line coming up from one side to the other. Like so. And it's not perfect, but we're putting flowers there anyway, so don't stress. And I'm just going to kind of like have it do another line that is thick and then it narrows in at the top. Maybe it's an old basket. Yeah. You know, it's, it's had a lot of flowers in its day. Maybe it just, maybe I got like mad at this one and I like bent it or, oh, yeah. you know, Actually, like maybe kids. It, kids played with it. It's yeah. a well-loved basket. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now we're going to put our flowers in. So I'm going to rinse my brush. And if you think back to, or if you want to look back to our floral truck tutorial, you can kind of look and see how we did some flowers there. I'm going to essentially do the same thing. So. I'm going to grab a little bit of violet and a little bit of rose red and mix those together to get this gorgeous um, color. <laughs> the name of the color left my brain. Um, I feel like it starts with an M. Magenta. Yes. Really? Yeah, I think that's it. Nailed it. But I don't know if that's right. Now I can't okay. even think. <laughs> Sorry. Let's move on. So it doesn't matter what color you want to do. And I'm going to kind of do some, these little guys here who they kind of look like um, lilacs or, um, you know, flowers that are cone shaped. That, that's all you that's need. That's their name. So I'm going to start with some curved lines that get smaller as I go up. Like so. If you want to drop a little bit of water in there to kind of like get some different values and mix, mess up these kind of more perfect lines, it's not a bad idea. And then I'm going to go do the roses. So I'm going to use just the red for that. Now, I know that I told you guys to do alternating circular lines to get the rose. And I know that's kind of a difficult concept. So another thing that you can do for roses is you can just do a swirl. So just start in the center and swirl out. And my brush is accidentally lifting up a little bit. Oh, that one. So you see how even the swirl gives us the illusion of layers of petals? So do a few swirls, okay? And then get some water and keep the swirls going on the edges of these, but using only water to get a lighter value. And then along the edges, I kind of just like to like have it drift off. So it gives the illusion that there's like layers of flowers there. Just like that. And if you want to drop in a little bit extra color in there for that little punch, I always support that. You know me and my drops of color. Okay, now we're going to do some black eyed Susans. So I'm going to take some yellow. And you can use straight yellow, or if you kind of want to warm it up a bit, you can put in a tiny, tiny bit of the red. And um, Su uh, Black Eyed Susans are really fun because if you think of a traditional flower when you're painting, like when you're, um, just think of like petals like this. Black Eyed Susans are the same, except you only do it halfway. and then you put a brown center. That's it. So you're gonna do like a half shape flower and I'm just painting right over the basket edge there. I'm also gonna do some over here. And then I'm gonna take some brown and if you wanna do it while it's still wet, They'll bleed a little bit, but I actually think that effect is cool. If you don't want it while it's wet, then just wait till it dries before you drop in these centers. And they have a nice round top that sticks out. And now I'm going to switch to my round two, or you could have been using it the whole time. There was no right or wrong. It's whatever you feel comfortable with. 
and I'm going to make some green, mixing the yellow and the blue together. And I'm going to put in some leaves and stems. So here's some stems here, some stems to my black-eyed Susans, and then I'll put some leaves. I wonder what the technical term for that flower is. Which one? Black-eyed Susans. That oh, can't be the technical term. I, th I think it's pretty close. <laughs> Black-eyed... Sarah's? <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> so um, I'm just kind of putting leaves sticking out. I know that this is not how they would actually be in nature, but it's this is why painting is fun, because you can make the world whatever way you want it to be. Are you looking up the technical name for Black Eyed Susan? No. <laughs> You're like, I already gave it to you. <laughs> okay, and then I'm just gonna do um, some something similar of this over on top here, because I wanted a little more height. I wanted things coming off my basket. So you can kind of do dots if you want it to be a little bit more like lavender, if you want to use just like purple. That. Ooh, that's pretty. I'm going to do a little more over here. Maybe over here too. Let's go crazy with this lavender. I'm liking it. Are you ready for the technical name? Yeah. <clears throat> Rudbeckia herda. Rudbeckia herda? Rudbeckia herda, commonly called black eyed Susan, is a North American flowering plant in the sunflower family. Oh. Native to Eastern and Central North America and naturalized in the western part of the continent as well as in China. <laughs> I wonder why they, I feel like there's easily the name Rebecca in there. Isn't there? Rebecca? Rebecca? It's R-U-D. Oh. B-E-C-K-I-A space H-I-R-T-A. Wow. Yes. I didn't even follow that in my brain because after three letters, I'm like, that doesn't make sense. Rud. <laughs> you mean Rebecca. Rud. It's a Rebecca Herta. <laughs> okay, so I want to show you guys a little trick here that I like to do. So we did our flowers, but there are some white spaces in between here. And over here, it's not really distracting, but if I'm looking on this right-hand side, this white space is like that gap is like staring at me in the face. So what I like to do whenever that happens, but I don't have room to do another flower, is I'll just get my brush wet and pick up a little bit of color, whatever color I want. And I'm just gonna do kind of a soft wash underneath there. Lift up your brush and then kind of blend it out. So then it's not heavy enough to draw attention to it, but it's filling up that space. So then it's not like sticking out how empty it was. I'm gonna do a little leaf too. Okay, so there are the flowers in our basket. You can do as many in whatever colors as your heart desires. And then we're gonna do a little shadow to kind of ground our basket. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of the blue with a little bit of the purple. Cause shadows don't always have to be brown or gray. I know that they are in nature, but actually it depends on what they're shadowing will determine the color of it. For example, if they're on a blue table, then the shadow wouldn't be gray on the blue table. It would be darker values of blue. That's how shadows work. So you can do whatever color shadow you want. I tend to stay within the cooler colors. Um, and then I'm just gonna go along kind of more the right-hand side of the basket, go a little bit above it, and then just take water and spread it out. Like that. Spread out the left-hand side. I just realized my light sources don't match, but that's okay. <laughs> shadow on I did the shadow here and then the shadow over here. There's funky lights going on in that room. We don't really know. It's fine. It's the children playing with it. It's the shape of the basket. It could just be a bruised basket. Yeah. Or maybe the wheat that it was woven by. It's darker just on, on that side. side. Yeah. So it's perfectly lit on the opposite. I, don't, I, I, I appreciate you trying. <laughs> And then I'm just gonna do one more layer of shadow. Blend that out. And done. <laughs> That's it. That was great. <laughs> so this is a fun project. Um, if you wanna go in and do more details or darken up some of your baskets, that's fine. Just remember to leave some of those white spaces to really get that 
that feel of the weave of the basket that it goes in and out play with the different colors you can get with your flowers put in a little shadow and of course this is your painting so you can add anything you want or do something totally different from this do whatever you want just really take the time to paint something and think about someone else and give it to them because that's how we can make the world a better place is just by showing that we care about people even if we don't even know them so Please do this project. Please send it to somebody that you're thinking about that you love. If you want to nominate someone for Let's Make Art Matter, we always switch it up every single month. So um, you can nominate someone on our website. Go to letsmakeart.com. Click on the Let's Make Art Matter. I think it's on our homepage. There's a button there that says nominate. So just fill out that form. And um, I think that's all we got to say. This is the best part of our box. I think it's the best thing that we do as a company. So take the time to do it. I think it really does make a difference. And uh, that's it. Bye.